Last week and so that would have been the third week of April 2017 and sadly Ryan Buell was arrested again I would definitely say that it's an understatement uh, between the last two shots that the police you know had released the first one when he was arrested for the felony for not returning the rental car we are talking about Ryan Buell from Paranormal State lead investigator Compared to his new mugshot that came out, you can tell there is a very sad, somber difference in in Ryan. He's going downhill. So I found this article online, and this is what it says to be a little bit more clear on you know the situation behind Ryan's arrest this time. A state college man and former television personality has found himself in additional trouble with the law after a reported altercation. Ryan Buell, 35, was arrested Friday. After a reported fight at his residence, State College Police said that Buell, the host of Paranormal Reality Show, Paranormal State, was previously arrested on theft charges in September of 2016. A non-jury trial for the theft charges is slated for May 18th. So he hasn't even gone, um, you know, into the process of going to see a judge for the last one, and now he's back in jail again. So according to the police affidavit, an officer responded at about 7.20 p.m. on Friday to his address on a call stating that Buell was potentially experiencing an overdose. On the scene, however, the officer was made aware of an alleged domestic assault between Buell and his boyfriend. The man stated that when he arrived home, he and Buell had gotten into an argument. The argument escalated. Buell reportedly scratched the man's face. When he pushed Buell back, police said that Buell then bit his finger. Officers did observe a, a deep bite in the man's finger that actually penetrated the fingernail. He also left scratches on the left side of his boyfriend's face and neck. When interviewed, Buell stated that he and the man had an argument, but he didn't remember any physical altercation. Buell was arraigned Saturday before a judge, and according to the court documents, he's been charged with the misdemeanor count of simple assault and summary charge of harassment. Straight bail was set at 25000 and a preliminary hearing is also scheduled for Wednesday. After all of this speculation, obviously, um, you know, sources that had gotten to me a while ago, thank you for being accurate. Uh, we had already had speculation that Ryan was in fact under the influence of drugs and he was having some sort of um, problem getting off the drugs and, and he's been addicted for a while. No one really knows what it was. Obviously Ryan is saying he remembered the fight, he didn't remember the actual physical altercation, so he's either lying or maybe he was on drugs and having an overdose or really really high and he doesn't remember doing it. Either way it's obviously not good. I'm assuming that he's going to be forced to separate from his significant other if there's actual charges being filed. Doesn't mean he will but it's super sad. Obviously, the photo that the police did release, uh, Ryan doesn't look good. And the other thing that I wanted to add to this was Ryan is now under suicide watch, according to several different uh, sources. So, you know, although there's been a lot of people that have gotten screwed over by Ryan Buell and his antics of tapping money from people falsely through PayPal, um, we still don't wish death on anyone, obviously, especially as this community, because we interact with people that have committed suicide, right? And I feel like a lot of the souls that we do interact with, sometimes the ones that get stuck are the ones that commit suicide. So, of course, we would never wish that on Ryan or anyone else for that matter or the families involved. 
So all I have to say is I wanted to let you guys know what was going on. It's really sad at this point. Uh, he's obviously starting to hit the bottom of the barrel, which it's going to take that for him to get out. My opinion is the best place for him is probably jail at this point since he can't clean up on his own. I've told you I've had family that have suffered from substance abuse before and the only way they have gotten clean is basically forced by going to jail. So let's hope in Ryan's case he can try to either get some help on his own or if jail keeps him there it'll force him to sober up and then maybe he can kind of reanalyze his life and let's hope you know for the sake of his life that you know he is not suicidal and he makes it through this um, super sad sorry to start out on a on a downer but um, I just think it's important for suicide awareness because I don't wish that on anybody and um, you know as the community most of us were at some point Paranormal State fans. It is an older show. It was probably one of the first paranormal shows that came out. Technology wasn't invented at that point, you know, like the Melmeter wasn't even invented and there wasn't decent night vision. So, you know, we have to give, you know, some credit where credit's due, but let's hope that for the sake of his life that he can eventually pull out of this. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, and I do have some other strange news that I wanted to talk about today. I personally was not aware of this, and I'm assuming a lot of you probably will not be aware of this topic either. And this is one of those moments I feel like I can use my platform with Ghost Girl Diaries you know, to make a stand and to discuss a problem that's going on in the paranormal community because after all, at the end of the day, all of us are paranormal enthusiasts and really that's all we care about, right? So this topic was brought to my attention because it actually personally affected me. For those of you that are subscribers that like love all of my different topics that I talk about and you've watched all of my videos, then most of you would be familiar with an older video that I did um, about Columbine High School. I'm not gonna go into details about it other than I was invited to investigate there. I turned it down because I didn't feel like it was appropriate. I just discussed this basically on my channel and in the meantime, this video has been flagged a lot by a lot of people. A lot of people felt like it was too soon to discuss it. Um, I thought I did it tastefully just because I, um, I really just wanted uh, people to understand how I respect the dead and the communities involved um, as far as not making false allegations or going into a location that I feel like it isn't appropriate. And that was really the point of that discussion was trying to show other investigators that it's okay to turn down an investigation if you feel like it's not appropriate. It's not always about getting as much evidence as you can and putting it out there or just going on a ghost hunt. Sometimes you do have to put people and their lives and their families in mind and that priority has to come first. So that was really the point of that video. Because it had gotten flagged many times due to the nature of the video of what it was about, a lot of people um, basically didn't think it should be up, didn't think I should talk about it, thought it was inappropriate, and obviously that was not what I meant to, to come across as. In the meantime, at some point, it drew a lot of attention to my channel from actual YouTube management. If you follow me on social media, you'll know that last weekend I was kinda having a Debbie Downer weekend. Everybody does that, you know, we all go through bad days and good days. Not every day is going to be perfect. And I was upset because I realized that a lot of the monetizations on my videos have been removed and I didn't know why. Now, of course, I reached out to YouTube and had a lot of discussions. Most of the time, they're only going to send you an automated message from a robot. So um, when I did find out why they were being unmonetized, um, I was actually kind of shocked about it. It wasn't uh, for a reason you know I thought it would be. Some of my videos I've said a couple of cuss words here and there, so then that gets marked as an adult video. You can only watch it if you're 18 and up, blah, blah, blah. There's all those different things going on. So verbatim, this is basically one of the reasons you cannot monetize a video. Content that's considered in a, inappropriate for advertising. If you don't know what monetization is, it's basically if people watch your videos, if they click into your other videos, it's how I make money back from you know, taking the time to do production. 
I don't like to, you know, promote products or anything else where you get money. A lot of YouTubers do that and I just think that's silly. So the way that I basically get paid back is via monetization. It's not really that much to be honest, but it's enough to help contribute back to me processing these videos, and investigating and all that stuff. So content that's considered not advertiser friendly. Of course, there's like sexual content, nudity, sexual humor, violence, all this stuff. Okay, well, obviously I didn't have any of that in there, but it does say controversial or sen sensitive topics. And one of those is discussing tragedies. Yeah, well, um, I'm a ghost hunter. I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm probably gonna talk about a lot of tragedies with the you know, locations that I've gone to and I'm not going to stop sharing those stories with you guys. So apparently my channel got a little bit nitpicked and anything that I talk about that is tragedy, which I've gone over history of the Cecil Hotel that's in LA. I've done, I've, I've done all kinds of random things. You guys know this. Anyways, it's considered a tragedy, even though it's basically me spurting off historical facts. And, uh, you know, some of this stuff is like 100, 200 years old. It's still being flagged on my channel, which is just hilarious. It's crazy. They don't remove my content. It's not like my videos are going to be removed. Um, it's just not monetized and it just makes me laugh because I actually reached out to YouTube again and again saying, but wait, what if this is like history based? Like I cannot help but discuss tragedies that are, you know, at locations that are historically based there. And, you know, they just have no, you know, nothing to say back other than sending an automated message from a bot. So I got down about it because I was like, all right, so what should I do? Should I stop? sharing stories and you know investigations I've had at locations in fact I'm going to be posting one tomorrow night about my experience at Bobby Mackey's I've kind of touched on it but I want to go into a bigger you know story about it and I'm like I can't like I love you guys like I wouldn't be here without you guys and I share my experiences and my stories and my experience because I'm trying to grow the community with you guys. Like, this is important to me. You know, I feel like paranormal has already become a thing that's common in our society when, you know, 50 years ago it would have been hush hush and you would have been hung in Salem if you talked about interacting with the other side. So that's why it's important for me to discuss paranormal because it needs to be a regular topic of conversation at this point. It, it's accepted. And I'm not going to be silenced or, you know, be punished because I love the paranormal just like you guys. So my next question was is, are other people going through this? Other YouTubers? Some are. So that's what I researched. Some have had issues. Some haven't. Some have spurted off historical locations and history and facts about tragedy and sadness and death and murder because that's why entities are there. Um, and they haven't been flagged like I have. So it's very strange. But then I thought, what about other social media? Is there other issues on social media? And to my surprise, there is an even bigger problem going on with another network. So I started researching this and I just happened to run across this profile on Instagram totally by accident. And the title of the, of the profile, if you wanna look it up, is Haunted Houses Org, okay? So basically this um, Instagram page is ran by a team, I believe, of people. They are actual realtors, they have their realtors license, and what they do is they only sell or resell haunted properties, whether it's an apartment, a mansion, a house, it doesn't matter, as long as it's haunted, they will sell it for you, basically. So they've kind of taken the paranormal, like we've talked about in our society, and ran with it. And I think it's great. But I'm, I'm looking at her page and I realized that she posted last in December and it was kind of a harsh message and let me just read it to you guys. Good morning ghouls. Some of you may or may not know that Facebook has decided to censor our Facebook page and our group called Haunted Houses. We had over 638 thousand fans worldwide because they consider paranormal an entertainment industry. Apparently it's been removed because Facebook is now considering paranormal fake news. So if you guys remember back up for a minute, Mark Zuckerberg a few months ago, who's CEO, owner, founder of Facebook, said that he was going to start canceling news stories that were fake news. 
somehow paranormal got intertwined with that because it hasn't been scientifically proven. So now all paranormal topics, videos, photos, memes are considered fake news. Going back to her post, we are extremely upset about this cyber attack. It took five years to build such a beautiful, organic community of loyal horror fans. So now we need your help, ghouls, by taking action and filing complaints with the Better Business Bureau, letting them know that Facebook has violated our First Amendment rights of freedom of press and ruined my haunted business. It has left me unemployed with extreme depression, anxiety, no way to feed my family, Please take a stand for what's right, friends, by protesting against Facebook and emailing them at press at fb.com, stating that you guys want Haunted House Facebook page back and now to report it with the bbb.org immediately. We have been in contact with our lawyers and we are still considering a major lawsuit against Facebook, as well as getting our petition for you guys to sign. Please share this story with your friends to show the world the injustice that's been endured by Mark Zuckerberg and his Facebook support team. And she hashtags, we believe in ghosts. She's asking people to boycott Facebook. She's also asking people to file a complaint against Facebook for the Haunted Houses organization and go to the bbb.org. I'm only repeating that because um, that's what her post says. So obviously I am not going to get political on my channel um, and I don't want anybody to get political either because I've always said this and I'll say it again. We all come here to get away from the riffraff of politics and to come basically enjoy one thing that we have in common which is paranormal, ghosts, ghost hunting, all that stuff. So I also found out there has been numerous other people that have had their Facebook pages, fan pages removed because of paranormal. Some people haven't, some people have been affected. And uh, there was another woman that, um, I don't know if she was actually Wiccan per se, but she had these really positive, uplifting quotes that she would create herself. She went by the name of Lady Moon Rain. So on this page, she would create basically picture memes or stories of things with the afterlife, things with spirits, things with being an empath, things with having positive energy. So even if she was Wiccan, she didn't really have anything to do with anything bad. Usually Wicca isn't a bad thing anyways. But her page also had a lot of followers, somewhere between I think 300,000 and 500,000 fans, and they removed her page as well. And she actually decided not to fight it, and she said she just wasn't going to go back onto Facebook ever again. Um, and then I actually did reach out to Haunted Houses Org, which is the company that's on um, Instagram. They are willing to talk to me about what happened to their business and the issues going on with Facebook. I told them that I basically wanted to make the paranormal community aware of what's going on, that basically social media is silencing um, paranormal enthusiasts or paranormal you know, discussions, negotiations, interests, and um, because it's being considered fake news. And, and I can't believe it when you have shows like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, uh, Dead Files. I mean, they're all big shows. And I mean, there's a hundred other ones we could name, right? And I can't believe that it's not being supported on social media. It's really shocking to me. And that doesn't include all the cryptozoology. Apparently cryptozoology, whether it's Bigfoot, um, Mothman, any of those, anyone that posts about those, if it's an article or a meme or a picture or um, a captured video, that will also be considered fake news and they can ban your page as well. So for the future, if something happens and Ghost Girl Diaries is basically removed, banned, or censored from Facebook, you guys know you'll have to find me on a different network because that's not gonna stop me, obviously, but um, they don't like anything haunted or ghost related being published currently on on Facebook. Um, if it gets reported enough, they'll actually disband your entire page, which I think is crazy, um, but whatever. So anyway, I'm really just wanting to bring this to light to you guys because I can't believe it. I'm totally shocked by it. I had no idea that this was going on. I didn't know that they would consider paranormal fake news. Uh, my biggest question to you guys is, what do you think about it? What is your opinion behind it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? 
I guess why I'm confused is if people don't like paranormal, why are they reporting it? Why don't they just not look at it? You know, like if you don't have an interest in paranormal, that's how I feel about my channel. If I get trolls or whatever, I'm like, if why are you looking at it then? If you don't like what I do, go make your own channel. You know, like I don't get it. So I just really wanted your feedback on what you guys think of the whole scope. Just so you know, I did delete, I did make the decision to completely delete and remove the Columbine video from my channel. Um, and that's just because it was my preference. I'm tired of it being flagged and, and that's it. Nothing else has really had um, a really big problem on my channel. So I think people get upset too if, if they flag not just my videos, but other videos that they don't like, they expect it to be taken down. YouTube doesn't just remove videos unless there's some sort of violent occurrence happening in the video. So I, I think people are, um, they, they'll just keep reporting it, hoping it gets removed and it's not going to. So anyways, that's the only issue I've had. I'm not gonna let it get me down. You know, I had, I had a rough day and I started looking at comments from you guys. You guys like make my heart swell because um, you give me that oomph that I need sometimes to keep fighting through, especially when you're about to, you know, take on something that's crazy like this. Make sure you guys give me your opinions below. I wanna hear it in your comments. I seriously wanna hear it. <laughs> Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on social media and I will catch you guys next time.